Thank you. Thank you. Well, in the world of Iron Man 3, Spider-Man, and Star Trek, it's actually the humans that have this astounding ability to regenerate missing tissues. So amputees will regrow missing limbs, and disease organs will make themselves healthy again. So I ask you, is this a world that's merely rooted in science fiction, or could it be a glimpse into a possible future? So my name is Vut Yin. I am a regeneration scientist, and I believe in a world where we can dramatically enhance our innate ability to heal. Now, as I look around this room, I'm willing to bet that each one of us sitting here today has been touched by heart disease in one form or another. Perhaps you have heart problems, or you know someone who has suffered a heart attack. If that is indeed the case, it wouldn't be surprising, because you see, heart disease is the leading cause of death, not only in the United States, but actually in the entire Western world. In fact, heart disease will kill more people than AIDS, and all cancers combined. In the state of Maine, one in four to one in five individuals will die of heart disease. And in 2009, did you know that our country spent over $300 billion to treat heart disease? So clearly, this is a major crisis, and it's one that demands a creative solution. Now, we've actually come a long way in our understanding of the human body. So the improvements that we have made in diagnostic tools have allowed us to not only identify, but treat diseases earlier than ever before. And it's because of advances in antibiotics, vaccines, and surgical techniques that now we are living longer and longer. But I ask you this, what good is it to live to be 100 years old if you have to wake up every day with severe disability? What good is it to have long life if you can't even remember the events of yesterday? Now, as our population ages, it's the increase in chronic diseases, like heart disease, like diabetes, kidney disease, coupled with degenerative diseases, like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, that are playing a significant role in the healthcare crisis in our country. And the underlying foundation of these diseases is the inability of our tissues to mount a regenerative response. So simply stated, humans have a poor regenerative capacity. And this limited ability for tissue repair actually gets worse as we age. Now, traditionally, both in science and in medicine, we tend to solve problems by throwing a lot of things against the wall. And we hope that something sticks. Well, what if? the solution to today's biomedical problems isn't something that you need to throw against a wall? What if the answer is something that already exists in each of us? What if the key is so fundamental that it's actually written in our DNA? Now, I've been conducting biomedical research and learning from animals for the better part of the last 15 years. And from my days at Duke Medical Center to my current position at the Mount Desert Island Biological Laboratory, I have come to appreciate the amazing abilities of animals in nature. There are animals out there that have the unique ability to regenerate a diverse collection of tissues on command. Animals like salamanders, zebrafish, Planaria, Hydra, and did you know that even deer antlers are capable of remarkable regenerative feats? Injure these animals and they will make themselves whole again. These animals have the ability to repair and regenerate missing and damaged tissue in a way that creates a near duplicate copy of the original. And they have been performing these regenerative acts over millions of years in evolution. So here's a movie of a salamander regenerating its forelimb, a movie that takes place over the course of two to three months. 
If you amputate the forelimb at the shoulder, it will regenerate the entire arm. If you cut off only the wrist, it will regenerate only the wrist. And these animals here, they will do this regardless of how old they are. Let's take a look at another example of the common aquarium fish known as the zebrafish. In this regeneration movie of tail fins, each frame that you are looking at represents only 24 hours of regenerative growth. So regardless of where you induce the amputation, at the end of two weeks, regeneration is effectively complete. And like the salamander, the zebrafish has to coordinate the replacement of bone, nerves, blood vessels, epidermis, and pigment cells. And it does so in a way that recaptures both form and function at the end of the regenerative process. These animals here, they are true champions of regeneration. You can injure their brain, their spinal cord, their pancreas, their liver. You can cut off a portion of its heart and it will heal the wound and it will fully regenerate the missing tissue so that function is absolutely recovered. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I think about the abilities of these animals to regenerate, that is nothing short of spectacular. So naturally, it begs the question, if animals like zebrafish and salamanders are capable of such amazing regenerative acts, why can't humans? Why can't we heal our damaged hearts with the same mechanism of action that a zebrafish uses to heal its injured heart? Why not? Now, some of you may be sitting here thinking to yourself, well, this is great if you're a fish. <laughs> what on earth is a fish going to tell me about my own abilities to heal my heart? Now, I'm going to concede, you and I, we look nothing like a fish. But did you know that a zebrafish and a human share about 70% of the same genes? Would it shock you to know that of all of the known human disease-causing genes, well, the zebrafish has 84% of them written in its own DNA? And lastly, and most importantly, did you know that the mechanism of action that the zebrafish employs to heal its amputated heart that regeneration genetic program exists in mammals, in you, in you, and me. So that is to say, if we induce the same heart injury in a newborn mouse, we see the same regenerative response that we do in an adult zebrafish. If, however, we allow these animals to get older and then we induce the injury, we see primarily scar tissue formation and no regeneration. This would be the exact same cellular response that you and I would exhibit if we had a heart attack. So what this means is that the instruction manual of how to heal a damaged and injured heart, it's not zebrafish specific, but it's actually written in our own genomic material. But it remains locked for reasons that we've yet to understand these regenerative genetic programs are not activated in adults. We need to unleash this potential. Well, in the summer of 2012, my research group identified a remarkable small compound. This is a compound that has the ability to unleash these genetic programs. This compound is called ZF143. Now, before we can test this in humans, we need to demonstrate its effectiveness in animal models. And I want to show you some of those data here today. So what happens when we injure the heart and we provide ZF143 to adult zebrafish? What we see is that heart repair and regeneration is absolutely amplified. That is to say, the creation of new heart tissue in the context of ZF143 is occurring two to three-fold greater than the normal situation. 
but we can do something else. We can play genetic tricks in these animals, and we can create a situation so that when we injure the heart, their response is similar to what we see in humans. So no regeneration and massive scar formation. If, however, now we add ZF143 to this equation, what we see is that the defect in regeneration is corrected. It is as if the dormant regenerative genetic program has been reawakened by ZF143. And this is exactly what we would like to do in humans. Now, will it work in humans? Well, we don't know yet, but it's incredibly promising. Because remember, the genetic program that is required to heal an injured heart it's not zebrafish specific. It's not mouse specific. It is not an alien genetic program, but it is one that resides in each one of our cells. With compounds like ZF143, we have the unique ability to unleash our body's own repair mechanisms. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world where chronic diseases are straining the very fabric of our healthcare system, straining it to its breaking point. It's a world where cynicism is rampant regarding the ability of science to be a part of the solution. But I believe the future is bright. I believe that advances in technological innovation have the ability to change lives. I want you to imagine a world Imagine a world where Alzheimer's and diabetes is as commonplace as polio is in our world. I want you to imagine a world where a child born today, by the time that he or she goes off to college, the very notion of heart disease is as remote as the probability of you and I contracting smallpox. I believe that advances in regenerative medicine and discoveries like ZF143 truly has the ability to shine a bright light on a seemingly dark future. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the future is incredibly bright, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.